65 wide. With Eric and Julie Zimelis, and behind us is Kailua Bay on a beautiful high surf day. That's right. So uh, today we're doing our spring update, and we're going to talk a little bit about the businesses here in Kona. And we're going to give you guys some information about what's happening with new construction um, and uh, some new trends that might be coming in this spring. Um, and that's going to include some really great things. So stay tuned, and we're going to take you around town and including up on the mountain. Um, and give you guys some great tips on enjoying your next vacation as well. Okay, so uh, one of the things we can't, of course, leave out of an update lately is the parking situation in Kona. So um, what you can see behind me is that there's maybe exactly five or six people parked behind me when this used to be completely packed. All the cars up on the upper level are for the employees to park. But what we're seeing, obviously, is people who are avoiding paid parking spaces. We have been downtown, and there's people down there. So people are definitely finding interesting ways not to have to pay for parking. Up along Kuakini, down the street, wherever they're walking in. Um, you know, people have to be resilient. But um, we also found out that the Coconut Grove Marketplace Shopping Center itself is for sale. I wonder if there's a correlation there. Mm. Um, but we did see that uh, it is $12.50 to park here per hour. If you um, are looking for parking in Kona, we've got the free parking space up off Kuakini and the county trying to help the situation has added 14 more spaces and uh, it's against the back wall and we're gonna show that to you uh, but at least they're trying to do something by adding parking but um, obviously uh, we're still there okay here we are at the uh, coconut grove marketplace and this used to be the Outback. And Outback was here again. In other words, a long time businesses. But they didn't close anything having to do with Hawaii. They just had bad business practices that closed all over the uh, all over the United States, including here in Hawaii. So, but good news is that we heard that uh, the employees were picked up by a second uh, business, that a second restaurant that will be coming in here shortly. And so we're getting a good new restaurant coming in. We just don't know what that restaurant's gonna be, but it is on the way. So uh, one of the things that's happened in Kona is um, a bays actually closed down during the holidays. Um, we were um, really excited when uh, they were able to keep it together um, after it turned out after the uh, volcano grill only be here for two months. A bays actually was on fire, and the young people especially enjoyed having live music here. And um, the owner sadly passed away. Um, not too sure what's happening with the a bays up at Waikoloa, but uh, this one is closed. And the good news is is that we've heard that a um, successful um, restaurant tour from Hilo is bringing their idea over to this space. So not too sure of the time frame, but it's going to be something new and different. And uh, you guys are going to be able to get your drink once again, facing the ocean in Kailua. Okay, here's one more business that is closed. It's the Kona Ocean Front Gallery. And they had been here for like, man, it must have been like 20 years they've been here, maybe even longer. Um, but they have uh, sort, of, sort of, I guess you'd say retired. And there is a new gallery coming in from Maui from what we hear and they should be here as soon as they get all the permits and get everything else going. So a lot of transition here going on here at the businesses in Kona. So here we are at one of our favorite stores in Kona, Tasty Kona, which specializes in bringing all these different local um, producers and craftsmen together. Um, and what we're going to show you guys is that Maui Island Dive Jewelers came in to be part of the space um, because they have actually lost their gallery in Lahaina, and so they decided to move over here to Big Island for the time being, which actually, when Eric was showing you that gallery downtown also, those people are coming in from Maui as well. So we're starting to see a little bit more Maui business people coming over um, to uh, the same, basically, we don't have French Street, but at least we have this. We are in front of the old Uncle Billy's, and uh, they have been slowly kind of working off and on for a long time. But we have some information we just thought we would partake about this, and that is the fact that they are going really slow because they're waiting on the permits to go through. And if you guys know, the county permit permitting process, particularly for commercial, is slow here in Kona, so that's probably why not much is happening. But uh, they are ready to go once they get the permits, they'll be able to get this going, and we look forward to that new rooftop restaurant that's gonna look out over the water. So that's uh, something to look forward to question is when it's going to be we're not totally sure but uh it's good to see that something's going to happen it's just a question of when so as we're walking downtown um, on late you can see um, behind me the downtown core this is also the parade route for the fourth of july and christmas parades and uh, we were almost going to lose those parades because we couldn't get enough volunteers to keep them going and the two women who run it for years and years got tired so i didn't want to see it happen to fall apart so i got a bunch of volunteers together and we created a new board um, around saving the parades and uh, we are going to be working with um, my newly formed 365 uh, community fund if you guys uh, 
want to save your calendars now, uh, July 4th, which is this year is a Thursday. We are going to have the parade and we are going to have fireworks and uh, it's going to be quite the party. And uh, in the future, what we'd like to do is actually see it turn into a one day festival around the whole town. So here we are at the Outrigger Kona Resort and Spa in the old Raised by the Bay. Yeah, so if you guys have been around for a long time, um, this uh, used to be the Sheraton, and uh, before that it was like, you know, the Kona Reef or something. Uh, but it's this been a area is the bar that usually is the bomb diggity of this resort, and it has been closed since 2020. Yeah, and now they are putting $60 million into this resort to, to renovate it, and they're doing everything. And I, I think that with the, the look they're going for is a mid-century tropical... Modern. Modern. I'm like, oh, Monolani? How's that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little bit like the Monolani. Yeah, so as we're walking just through this area, you guys, the abuse that outdoor patio has received that you know it when the, the waves, waves are big here yeah, they, they come crash up, they over come everything up and crash over that and it's just like literally melting the steel and the, since this bar has not been been in use for almost four years um this place definitely needs a refresh and a remodel so hopefully i've heard stories that they might be bringing like a famous restaurant in so maybe they had to do the remodel oh look at that see I didn't, I didn't even know that some of the other things are they are redoing the pools both the adult pool and the uh pool on the ocean side right. and they're also redoing the um the convention centers as well so they're right. doing a full yeah full and, and 500 bedrooms too 511 to be exact right and so uh we're seeing um the, the workmen right here just shoving there's off there's the sound of construction yeah. buzzing all around us I guess yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and uh you know um if you've been around this when eric and i first moved here in 2005 they had just finished doing a 70 million dollar renovation um and that was 15 years ago right and but you know what though you guys this place was built like probably the 70s yeah so it just constantly needs to be updated and made. especially here so, on the point you know yeah. it, this place gets a lot of a lot of water and a lot of salt yeah and, and speaking of the point yeah um so we saw a sign out there that basically said they're doing uh, night markets out here oh yeah and one so more they've little got tip for the day different yeah. vendors and things so we're gonna get a little more information while we're here to give you guys uh we'll put it in the video yeah because being out here i'm telling you the sunset here is great and also the manta rays come here when they put the lights on so this all is a beautiful experience there you go. So let's take a look around and see what we can see. So I can already tell that they've changed all the furniture. Uh, the pool um, things are blue and white now instead of this whole thing used to be brown. But what is really cool, I love the slide here. My daughter was just here about two days ago and she said that they have actually made it super smooth, super fast. The only way you can get on that slide though is if you're a guest and you get a wristband. But uh, that slide is one of the better ones in all of white. Awesome new business that just opened because we got a chance to actually taste the food um, is the Clover and Mug. And this is Josh and Daniel, and they have actually decided that KFO is where they wanted to bring their new business. So tell us a little bit about um, what people can expect by coming here and enjoying your food. What are you serving? When did you open? What happened? Okay, so we actually op just opened like seven weeks ago. Okay. It's been only seven Fresh, weeks. brand new. Yes. <laughs> and also, um, we actually wanted to combine all together in one especially like drinks, food, and dessert. Uh -huh. And also we wanted to uh, bring a uh, specialty dessert and some food from uh, another country, which uh -huh. is South Korea. South Korea yes. is our first one, I think, in Kona, yes. South Korean. Mm -hmm. okay. So especially when you see the menu, there's a couple and the shaved snow, which is called Bingsu in Korean. Uh -huh. Yes. So they have basically shaved ice in Korea. Yes, but the texture is really different. Okay, I heard it's like really soft. Yeah, yeah. fluffy. Okay, soft and fluffy. And then what's the story with the uh, the adding the ube into your menu? Ube, um, we just thought like people in Kona they love ube, uh -huh. so we just try to add it uh -huh. yeah. from their favorites. So it is bright purple, so all you Instagram yeah, people purple. come and eat that. <laughs> um, and then um, what's the story with uh, the um, croffle? Whose idea was that? Oh, actually, the croffle is it's really famous in Korea. Oh, okay. So we just brought it from Korea. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And tell them what a croffle is. Croffle, we make a waffle. It's a, like a waffle with the croissant dough. And then it's lightly sugar-coated, so it's like crunch outside and has croissant flavor inside. Yeah. So good. Yeah, it is yeah. really good. <laughs> we open at 7.30 in the morning, and then we open until 8 o'clock. 
Wow, long days. Yeah, long, long days. days. So it's seven days a week. So okay. just stop by anytime okay. right here. And yeah. what's your website? Oh, uh, it's cloverandmilk.com. There you go. Okay, when you show up at a new restaurant, the best thing that ever happens ever is when somebody actually lets you taste the food. So these guys are letting us try their top sellers. So tell us again, you guys, what this is. Okay, so this is. Yeah, this is a uh, bulgogi panini. So it's like a marinated beef with sweet soy sauce. So it's like teriyaki but in, in Korean version. Okay, and then this is. It's called okay. tuna milk. Okay, tuna milk. Okay, yes. yum yum. Okay, yeah. definitely lunch foods. Mm -hmm. And then the piece de resistance. So this is this. one of our best sellers, strawberry coffee. Okay. So there's a puree on top. It's a house made strawberry puree with organic strawberry. Yum yum yum. yum. And then tell us about these drinks. This is ube cream cold brew. So it's just a regular cold brew and we just put uh, ube cream on top of it. So there's a layer of ube cream on top and then you can mix it or you can just sip it separately. Okay, is that pretty? That's pretty. <laughs> and then what's this? This is called a strawberry egg, like a lemonade. Okay. So this is also also um, strawberry puree. That you make here? Yeah, make with here. Fresh, with fresh rubber. Fresh yep. rubber. Okay, so for all of us who have been saying there's nothing tasty in Kona anymore, you have to come here. So we're gonna dig in and tell you guys how it is, but thank you guys very right. much. I appreciate that. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. <laughs>I've got Denise Westbrook here from Big Island Social Dance Club and if you guys have been watching Facebook at all you're seeing all these people like looking like they're having a great time dancing in an interesting space this is it so can you tell us a little bit about how long you've had the business open and a little bit about what goes on here oh yeah I'd be happy to we actually opened our doors formally on uh, January 20th of this year we actually got into the space for the second half of the year and have been spending the last eight months decorating uh, decorating I think is a light term for what you see on the massive on the walls awesome here. art <laughs> renovation it, it is an art gallery <laughs> it's an art gallery we teach dance lessons for all levels of social dancing for everything from zook to ballet and um, you can come in for parties you can come in for dance events or you can rent our space for a private affair yeah I was talking about this this is the party space guys it's party central <laughs> yeah so, so we um, seat 70 or so 70 there you go people come from all over the island actually all over I have guests who are here just a few feet behind us right now who came to visit from Colorado and dance. hey cool yeah, so it's really and, uh, you know we just ran into um, a couple in uh, Canada and we've been getting a lot of Canadians who recognize us when we see us here and so now all you Canadians you know where to come and dance now <laughs> so if they want to know more about how to get a hold of you for renting the space or to take dance classes or whatever you need what's the best way to contact you, you can reach us on uh, Big Island Social Dance Club .com or on Facebook Big Island Social Dance Club and uh, what happened here I've uh, been at this now for 50 years plus and um, I retired and then I found out that I had the beginning stages of dementia oh, no. which my mom also had and she suffered so much with it and when I went to the doctor the doctor said never stop dancing it's the number one activity to help build yourself back up and to stave off the, uh, the, the problems with Alzheimer's and, and dementia so that is our charity of choice no. and uh, I'm back in this and I'm actually finding a bit of an improvement being Yay. able to speak entire sentences and Yay. things like that and remember <laughs> things yeah remember well, and also things. a lot That's of good. the people who um are part of our Kona newbies group and a lot of people coming to Hawaii right now are uh retired they're getting yeah. retired oh, shoot. and yeah. so to do something new and different and it's kind of maybe a little challenging is actually good for your brain it is that's true that's so, the very best thing you can do poor denise yeah. come in do some dancing and um i'd like to actually start putting on a couple events for our 365 community as well here i would so, love that so we'll see you guys uh, on the dance floor <laughs> So here we are at Kona's newest art gallery, Art House Hawaii Gallery, and the owner, who's famous, is Terry uh, Field, and she is going to tell us a little bit about this gallery, how long you've been open, what are you offering, and how people can actually get a little bit of your talent themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Julie. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Terry, and I'm here at my gallery. Um, it's down at the Brew Block, so it's a very like convenient spot. Yeah. Um, to come browse art and also maybe enjoy a, a paint and sip class and then head to dinner afterwards. But it's like a, 
There's lots to do down in this area. And um, in the gallery, I feature 22 um, other Big Island artists besides myself. So there's 23 different artists in here. And I've uh, everything from a wood artist to glass artist, um, abstract, realism, all, I think uh, hopefully a little bit of something for everybody to see. And then I also do paint and sip classes. And those happen every Saturday. And it's from 3.30 to 6. It's like about two and a half hour session. And you don't have to have any experience for painting at all. I guide the group um, from beginning to end. And um, there's always a surprise artist in every class or several artists in every class. So that's always fun for me to see. And also just share my love of painting with everybody. Let's talk a little bit about your background as an artist. Tell us a little bit about how you got started and what you would like to do the most. Um, I mostly do, and I think I'm known for my florals and botanicals, like the ones behind <laughs> me. So I love, I especially love like the white florals here in Hawaii. I love white ginger and uh, the gardenias, all kinds, hibiscus and all the colors. I've painted them all. And I love the lushness of banana leaves and um, all the tropical leaves I really love to capture. And then of course, seascapes. Um, but yeah, I've been painting uh, full time, all in. Um, I think kind of since my kids were started driving themselves around, yeah. <laughs> so I had more time to put toward my art again. So if they want to learn more about how to do the paint and sip classes, and also about more about the gallery, where do they go? Um, they can go to uh, terryfieldart.com or terry.field on Instagram, and also on Instagram there's Art House Hawaii and the art house Hawaii, or arthouse-hawaii.com for the website as well. Okay. So either website. And you are open from when to when? I'm open Monday through Saturday, 11 to 6 p.m. So you have plenty of time to come down here and check yeah. out the artwork and buy something local and support our local artists. Thank you very yes, much. Thank and you good guys. luck with this gallery. I think it's awesome. Thank you guys. So here we are at Ka'olu Beach Park, one of our favorite places to come because we actually have a lot of volunteers here with the Reef Teach program. Um, so um, I've always asked the question is why do we let these pavilions stand the way they are looking like they're in massive disrepair? Good news, this is an update. So there is a bill, it has just passed. It is Bill HB 2143, which requires them to hire an engineering firm to study, plan, assist, and conduct preliminary design and concept work for a two-phase design project to restore the beach park. So I'm not too sure exactly in terms of um, timing, but um, the Reef Teach leaders have told us that they will get rid of this pavilion down here next to the ocean because of climate change, that they're gonna move it up closer to the highway because of course we're expecting you know sea level rise. But um, the good news is, is that um, they're going to at least get the study done and get the funding in place. And so things will be happening here at Ka'alu. And speaking of things happening here at Ka'alu, um, just so you guys know, um, at the end of May, they will be closing the um, bay down for the spawning that happens every year. So that way, for a few days, there'll just be no swimming in there. It's going to give a chance the, um, the coral to uh, have their little babies. Um, and also, we will be doing a fundraising run, a fun run, a 5K fun run on this Sunday, March 17th. And uh, we are having people donate $30 to participate. And we're also taking just general donations. And the money will go to the free sunscreen that we offer the visitors that is mineral and safe for the bay. So if you'd like to donate, um, I'm gonna put the link below. It's from our newly formed 365 Hawaii Community Fund. Donate if you can, because it makes a difference. Okay, one of the things we like to talk about when we do these updates is what's happening with new construction, what's happening with housing, and some of the issues facing Kona. One of them, as we keep talking about, is affordable housing. So um, the county is building affordable housing. This is called Coloco Heights, and there are 99 um, two and three bedroom units, and um, they are tiered on who can actually get in here. It's for um, low, low income, low income, and under like market. And we will give you more information as the county releases that. But this is going to be at least one step closer to those things I say we don't have enough of, and that's apartments. Um, what the county is also doing is they're developing a other um, 
uh, housing opportunity for transitional housing um, down off of um, Coloco, um, I mean Calicahay, and this one is off of uh, Hinalani. So close together, but um, nice out here where um, no one can say not in my backyard, uh, but these people will have an opportunity to be close to everything in Kona, like all the shopping and everything. This is great really great news for the county um, good job for the planners for putting this together and I'm not too sure what the timeline is in terms of getting this thing up and running but um, Eric did the drone over the top of it and it looks like it's it's going pretty quickly so that's awesome um, again 99 units that's awesome that 100 extra people are going to be able to find affordable housing in this town called Kukui Ola and, or called Village 9. And the idea is that they're gonna start with 16 of these special emergency housing uh, areas are gonna happen. And then eventually they're gonna get 48, so I guess semi-permanent homes for people to uh, re for rehabilitation, low income. Do you know where we are? We're at the Coloco Interpretive Center. Why are we here? Because we're wrapping this up, don't go. <laughs> away yeah yeah what, what we need just two more minutes of your time two more times so what we're going to do you guys is ask for your help um as we do these quarterly updates on businesses in kona um if you know of a business that's about to open or you're a business owner yourself reach out to us we love to be able to help the community by letting them know about some of the new businesses that are coming into town yeah that's that's great and uh, i hope you guys enjoyed all the things that we covered today uh, we took like three days to get all these different places to get it all filmed <laughs> for us so and um, you guys, don't forget, um, the two things that I did bring up was the fact that uh, we are um, raising money for the um, uh, Kahulu Beach Park. You might not get this in time, but the GoFundMe uh, link will still be up, and I'll leave it down in the description. And also for the Save the Parades, if you guys could, like, you know, just pitch in a little bit and let's make the community better from your living room you could help Kona um, also uh, I said make sure that you know that we are taking new submissions for the small businesses and also don't forget that we are sponsoring this channel ourselves 365 Hawaii and we work with real broker and we would love your business to buy or sell a home here in Hawaii yes so and with go that to go 365 Hawaii living.com join the Ohana um, the free resources that we're offering for buyers is invaluable info also we are working with sellers on getting them information about what their house is worth and making sure that they can go through the steps it takes to sell your house successfully while you're in Hawaii so we will come back to you guys uh, in the next week or so with something more cool and interesting things for you to listen to. But in the meantime, we say aloha.